Welcome to Expo Digest, your number one program that periscopes Nigeria's non-oil sector. Expo Digest brings you information that helps you see economic possibilities in non-oil exports, a sector we strongly believe is Nigeria's alternative source of foreign exchange earnings. On the program, we highlight several opportunities and explore strategies to exploit these opportunities as we seek to identify and profile solutions to challenges in the sector. Our goal is to enable practitioners and policymakers improve on their respective roles as it relates to export business. My name is Mayoko Akwaterabo. Non-oil exports remain Nigeria's alternative source of foreign exchange. You also can be a big player by knowing how and what it takes to engage in profitable non-oil export business. Exports Digest features experts with local and global knowledge of non-oil export business, presenting you with everything you ever need to know. Non-oil items you can export, important tips on export packaging, export documentation and regulatory standards, logistics and transportation issues from farm gate to the port and then destination country, export funding and available markets for different commodities, products and services. Don't miss Export Digest, showing on Core TV Mondays at 8 p.m. with a repeat broadcast Wednesdays at 12.30 p.m. Export Digest, promoting Nigeria's non-oil export sector. As we begin a new quarter, it is important that we look at how to better inspire more businesses to participate effectively in non-oil exports so that Nigeria can access an appreciable chunk of global wealth. We are not there at all. We shall be tracking non-oil export sector in Nigeria against the background of the magnitude of economic gain that can be achieved when adequate support is provided to this sector. We all owe Nigeria a duty to together chart a course for economic recovery and growth. Our focus this quarter is in furtherance of our mandate at Quinona Ventures Limited and by extension on Export Digest to ensure that government, policymakers and all stakeholders see the immense possibilities in non-oil export and rise up to the task of making Nigeria a major player in global economic activities and a force to reckon with in the community of nations as far as wealth is concerned. Welcome again to Expo Digest. My name is Ken Okawa, the president of the National Association of Nigerian Traders, NAS. I have been a C. Uruapa, personal development trainer, public affairs analyst and an entrepreneur. Keep watching Expo Digest. Export Digest. Don't change it out. Let us begin appraising the support currently being provided to non-oil exports in Nigeria. Olufemi Boyede, a certified international trade professional and the MD CEO of Coinona Ventures Limited, joins us to gauge the adequacy of incentives made available to non-oil export business in Nigeria. I think the best angle to start appraising export support in Nigeria is to first and foremost try to understand what is the mindset of government. Because the more they talk about export support, the more confused some of us uh, get. I wrote an article about 12 years ago, I think it was titled Paying Lip Service to Export Promotion in Nigeria. And I think, um, with due respect, we are almost still at the same level of almost being uh, seen to pay lip service to export promotion. For some of us, call us die-hard crusaders of non-oil exports. In fact, I, I stand to be accused of being a die-hard crusader of non-oil export as the way out of Nigeria's economic woes. The truth is that until 
we understand and we begin to declare non-oil export as solution. We haven't started. Let us clear the air on some components we erroneously think make up the non-oil sector, the revenue believed to be generated therefrom, and what this portends for Nigeria's industrialization, growth, and ultimately the economy. Every reference to diversification in Nigeria thus far has always ended with non-oil revenues. And non-oil revenues as understood by the technocrats and the experts and the advisors crafting Nigeria's economic direction is tending to depend more on tax and then uh, import revenues. Let, I know there are other sources that have been uh, uh, targeted, but let me take the danger of these two in the first instance. I have said it on this program before. Who gets taxed, either individual or corporate? Who is the person to pay tax? It is somebody who has made profit from an economic activity. Anything outside that is levy. And levy is a punishment that you get to pay whether or not you are participating in export, I mean, economic activity. So let's come back to tax. As long as you have not made profit, you are going to be declaring loss. And what you usually see, even in companies' audited accounts, is profit after tax, which uh, presupposes that you have made a gross profit, tax has been paid out of that profit, and then you now have profit after tax to share to your stakeholders or shareholders. In the situation where 70% of Nigeria's industry is reporting decreased or decreasing and daily uh, probably terminating capacity utilization, Nobody is making profit. Even the banks are no longer declaring hundreds of millions of profits. The oil companies are not declaring profit in the magnitude they used to. So who is going to generate the non-oil revenue? So that takes us to the second uh, 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 revenue center that we are targeting. That is, again, excise, which you had that they are trying to raise right now, and uh, import duties. Import duties on machinery and raw materials are usually between 0 and 5 percent. Where you get high import duties is on finished goods. And that is where you actually get up to 20 percent or 35 percent. And then you now add the industrial protection levy that raises some of them to 70 percent. The bottom line is import duties actually generate money I mean, economic activity and industrial capacity utilization in other countries because it is there that the goods are manufactured and then brought to us to buy. So, on two levels, import duties actually diminish industrial capacity in Nigeria. At the same time, they make sure that Nigeria remains a dumping ground for finished products. So, this don't pay us at all. And I thought that we should take quality time on export digest to uh, explain this to the understanding of the average Nigerian. Where then lies the key to economic turnaround? We go back to the only solution that we know of, and that is the solution that allows us to take out our own goods and finished products or semi-manufactured products and earn hard currency that helps to shore up the foreign exchange reserves of Nigeria. So the whole issue about whether it is depreciating exchange rate or it is stabilizing exchange rate, we still believe here that export, non-oil export, is the answer. And that's the reason why one tends to believe that until we get to the level where export actually becomes Nigeria's number one priority, it is still as if we are paying lip service. That would be my candid assessment of export support in Nigeria. 
Non-oil exports remain Nigeria's alternative source of foreign exchange. You also can be a big player by knowing how and what it takes to engage in profitable non-oil export business. Exports Digest features experts with local and global knowledge of non-oil export business, presenting you with everything you ever need to know. Non-oil items you can export, important tips on export packaging, export documentation and regulatory standards, logistics and transportation issues from farm gate to the port and then destination country, export funding and available markets for different commodities, products and services. Don't miss Export Digest, showing on Core TV Mondays at 8 p.m. with a repeat broadcast Wednesdays at 12.30 p.m. Export Digest, promoting Nigeria's non-oil export sector. The greatest news within the non-oil export circle in the last few days has been the lifting of the embargo on the Export Expansion Grant, EEG. How is the sector reacting to this development? About two weeks ago, um, we got a circular where, by we, I mean the export sector in Nigeria. We got a circular from the Nigeria Export Promotion Council asking exporters to now come and supply, I mean, uh, submit baseline uh, data that allows the council to allocate export expansion grant rate for the years the EEG has been on suspension. 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. Beautiful, good work on the part of the NEPC. That tends to signify that the government has finally lifted the um, suspension that was on EEG. A lot of people ask, was it ever on suspension? Because there is nowhere you will find any document today that says that the uh, government is hereby suspending EEG, whatever it is. The export sector is happy and I'm sure that they are thanking government that finally the EEG embargo has been lifted. But is EEG adequate as export support for Nigeria? That, I believe, is what Export Digest wants to be looking at in the whole of this quarter. When we begin to look at what other countries are doing to ensure that their companies and their exporters begin to earn a larger share of the global wealth in non-oil export. Hmm. What magnitude of cushion does the export expansion grant actually provide for non-oil export businesses? Let's analyze. By the time you look at the cost of uh, financing export production in Nigeria. Comparing it with uh, a UK company that comes in to Nigeria to buy in order to export or from China. In these two countries that I've mentioned, the lending rate or borrowing rate rather because they are the ones borrowing will probably be at a ceiling of 6%. The lowest borrowing rate in Nigeria for a Nigerian exporter will probably be about 24% per annum. It takes the Chinese or the um, European, takes them about two weeks to put in an application and get uh, I mean, their hands on export working capital. It takes an average Nigerian exporter eight months, if he's lucky, to process and fulfill all the conditions for him to draw down on an export uh, financing facility. And by the time you look at 6% against 20, 24%, and then if you convert that uh, laterally, I guess that uh, the 30% uh, I mean, highest rate of export expansion grant in Nigeria actually tantamounts to maybe about 4% of benefit for the Nigerian exporter. And I'm, I've just taken export financing alone. The Nigerian exporter, especially the manufacturer exporter, he sinks his own borehole uh, because he must have access to water. He provides his own generator. He also fuels the generator. Diesel could start the year at 150 naira per liter and end the year 
at 320 naira per liter. The cost of powering the industry is directly impacting on the cost of production of Nigeria's export. By the time you factor all this in, you see that the 30% export expansion grant that is given to a Nigerian exporter actually only helps him to reduce some of the unnecessary extra expenditure that go into his cost of production. Because if he was taking power from the national grid, or if you had access to industrial gas at a government discounted rate or a, a special rate for export production, we won't be talking about the same thing that we are talking. The EEG is the most known non-oil export support instrument. There are other non-oil incentives, although many do not know they exist, maybe because most of them are not in effect. What happened to our export development fund that has been in the act, the Nigerian um, uh, Export Incentives and Miscellaneous uh, Provisions Act, number 65, that had been in existence since 1986. In 1986, government actually provided 18, I repeat that, 18 different incentives to support export activity in Nigeria. Some of these have never even been activated. I've never heard about the export price adjustment scheme being put to work. I do not know any Nigerian exporter who has um, benefited from a fund that allows him to pay for market research. I know that Nigerian exporters have been assisted, still been assisted by the Nigeria Export Promotion Council to participate in overseas trade fairs. But what happens when they secure orders, large orders after the trade fairs? Who does the follow up? Do they have access to the necessary funds to produce the quantities for which they were given orders? No. Because then you need to go to the Nigeria Export Import Bank and go and find Nexim and find out what is actually the capital available for them for on lending to exporters. Some seven, eight years ago, I did an analysis of that bank and my conclusion at that time was that if two cocoa processing plants only, if Nexim were to provide adequate working capital for two cocoa processing factories in Nigeria, they won't have any money again to lend to any other uh, uh, sector, the, uh, I mean, uh, any other industry in the export sector. These are the questions that we need to be looking at. These are the reasons why we need to actually look at the export support institutions also to understand if there are institutional weaknesses that needs to, uh, need to be addressed and if there are policy support instruments. If not, if you are looking at whether they are adequate today or not, my conclusion is that they are grossly, grossly inadequate. Exporters need all the instruments of support they can possibly get. We have quite a number of them already passed into law many years ago, but simply lying dormant. If we look at what other countries are doing to support their industries, we we'll just understand that we don't have any other choice than to review, even if we are starting only from those 18 incentives that were already provided for because they are backed up by law. But of course, they can't work. Why can't they work? For example, one of the um, incentives uh, that the Export Promotion Council is supposed to be administering is supposed to come from a 10% uh, share in all income on maritime uh, activities. I think it's NIMASA now. NIMASA was not in existence then, so the Act actually provides for 10% of um, income from maritime activities that have to do with shipping anyway. I'm not sure that the Nigeria Export Promotion Council is having access to it or if they are doing, if it is not after much, much headache. But there just has to be a way to support um, export industry. Like I said earlier on, how many Nigerian startup exporters can actually sit down and write up, write 
an export plan that they can take to Nexim in order for Nexim to look at it and say that it's a, that is a specialized capacity. And in other countries, there is, and in fact, not just other countries, the Export Development Fund already on its own provides for that kind of activity to be reimbursed by the Nigeria Export Promotion Council. I'm not sure there is any SME exporter in Nigeria that has ever gotten approval of NEPC to go and engage Quinonia Ventures Limited, for example, to help you develop an export plan and then um, NEPC pays Quinonia Ventures Limited. It doesn't happen. And those are part of what we're talking about, export support institution. Why Quinonia Ventures? Well, we say export consultants, of course. Who are the export consultants in Nigeria? How many, uh, uh, what do you call it, how much support, intellectual support, do export consultants get in Nigeria? It's all developing. So again, to wrap up on this issue of um, adequacy or assessment of Nigeria's export support, the truth is that the, support, the Nigeria export industry seems to have grown in spite of the inadequacy of export support, not because there is export support. And so the best way would be to begin to look at how to actually um, develop support instruments that are not only oriented to, but actually have direct impact on the export sector. To enable Nigerians optimize the benefits from the country's vast agricultural products such as cassava, oil palm, rice, tomatoes, and others. The Bank of Industry has launched a 5 billion naira cottage agro-processing fund, the CAP Fund. Customers can access the fund to establish plants to process our various agro-produce into food products or intermediate raw materials for industries at a single-digit interest rate of 9% per annum. For more information on the CAP Fund, please visit www.boinigeria.com slash CAP Fund. Bank of Industry, developing Nigeria's agro-processing industry through the CAP Fund. Affairs Commission ensures your good start in non-oil export business. Let us hear from them. We are proposing an amendment to allow people option to either register a limited partnership or a limited liability partnership or a sole proprietorship or any kind of business names that somebody intends to register. We have also introduced some elements of charities in the proposed amendment, borrowing from what obtains in the Charities Commission. Because the framework for, the framework for incorporated trustees as presently constituted in Part C of the Companies and, companies and Island Matters Act is not very elaborate. And it has not, it has not clearly drawn a clear distinction between charities and other foundations and other incorporated trustees that are not necessarily operating as a charity. And the sources and application of funds, whether these charities are coming in as by the, whether the individual is the one to provide the funds or whether they are generating these funds from members of the public. No such distinction is made. So we have tried to borrow a lot from the provisions of the Charities Act in the UK. We've incorporated some of these provisions in the re revised law because whatever you are trying to do now, you cannot reinvent the wheel. Uh, the, the way company law started, it started from the UK system, although we've tried to borrow from what obtains in other jurisdictions, looking at our local peculiarities. So these are some of the details. These are, in summary, these are some of the areas of amendments that we have pro pro proposed, but it's not exhaustive. As I have said, it covers over 220 sections of karma. And uh, an example, issues of fines and penalties as contained in the Act. Some of the penalties talks about 5 naira, 10 naira, 15 naira, which are not realistic, realistic in the present day. 
when Kama was enacted in, 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 in 1990, the dollar was equivalent to 75 kobo. But what do we have now? So we have proposed an, an, an amendment on the penalties too, to multiply them to a rate that is almost in line with the present exchange rate. So these are some of the areas of amendments that we have proposed. And as I have said, it's very wide range. And it covers a wide range of issues. And we've tried to adopt from the best practices from the various jurisdictions of the world. I'm Magdalene Palma. My name is Toy Yonasevi. I'm based in the U.S. I'm Ken from Sakhen Ife. Keep watching Export Digest. And I would recommend very strongly that you come along. Keep watching Export Digest. That's Export Digest for today. We hope the program has helped in improving your knowledge of the non-oil export business environment in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us today. You can watch this particular episode and others before it on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash export digest. Do send in your comments, observations and contributions as we continue on our march towards making Nigeria a viable exporting nation and to lead our viewers into profitable export businesses. Our channels of communication are open and now showing on your screen. for their support. You also can advertise your products and services on Export Digest. Contact us today and let us grow your business with you. Do join us same time on this same channel next week on another episode of Export Digest. My name is Mayokun Apoterabo. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. Mm -hmm.